a neutral rating on Cisco, $50 price target. I was reading your note, and as far as I can tell, you're one of the few that basically is calling a downturn in this networking equipment market. What was your takeaway? Yeah, uh, Caroline, Ed, uh, great to chat with you again. It feels like it's been only about a month since we caught up on Cisco, given the uh, Splunk deal. But um, look, um, I think there's, uh, we agree and we don't agree at the same time with what Cisco's saying. You know, our checks heading into this print and even some of its peers on calendar, uh, like Arista and Juniper and F5 and, and sort of the networking space overall, we started to see a downtick in, in sort of what enterprises uh, were looking to order. And really the key theme, I think, for us heading into uh, all these prints, including uh, last night, was digestion. Uh, that, that's the best word you can use. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had orders from uh, 2021 and 2022 pushed into calendar 23, um, and, and you're just seeing that digestion of orders. And meanwhile, when budgets start to get tighter, networking it tends to be the first thing that you try to run hotter and, and squeeze as it, you can uh, get away with it for some time. So uh, we're a little bit skeptical that we could see a, an acceleration again in product orders in their fiscal second half, mm. uh, especially when you start to think about budgets getting set for calendar 24, roughly about now with a lot of CIOs and, and heads of IT. James, you mentioned that the last time we were on, we are talking about the Splunk deal. Does that, therefore, thesis still make sense? The diversification, not just hardware, networking gear, but getting into the software, getting into sort of longer-term payments from clients? Absolutely, uh, Caroline. It's, it's a great um, part of really why they need Cisco. Uh, I'm sorry, why, they, why Cisco needs Splunk. Um, and overall... It will help with that recurring revenue piece. It'll remove the bumpiness of Cisco's current business. But at the end of the day, even with Splunk, you're still going to have the cyclicality that Cisco mm. uh, has to deal with, uh, given that networking piece just being the, the biggest part of its business at this point. Talk up AI a little bit. I mean, they did seem to be saying that the appetite is there. They're building, what, a billion dollars of orders that they see in their line of sight. Is that enough to offset what we see as basically managed decline or managed digestion, as you say, for the next few quarters? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a nice narrative to have, but and we did this kind of back to basics piece around networking, uh, specifically switching and, and routing not too long ago. And you dive deep into, you know, where could AI spending on switches be essentially? Uh, and you see estimates out there calling for about 10 billion ish, and, and even Chuck mentioned that last night, with 75% of it expected to be on Ethernet as opposed to NVIDIA's InfiniBand being the other roughly 25%. But even when you talk about, say, 10% of Cisco's switching business a few years from now, being uh, AI driven, that's a small part of Cisco's networking business when you're talking about a you know, $30 billion plus networking business on its own. You're talking about wired and wireless, whatever connects devices moves data from A to B. But th what jumped out at me about your note versus others is the end customer. We're talking about, in, in Cisco's argument, big enterprise customers, right, not SMEs. Mm. And I kind of think of it like the pandemic, right? Coming out of the pandemic, we all had an excess of hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Bear with me. But it seems like a lot of these big enterprise companies, they just have an excess of the networking and routing gear. Do you, do you see that as evidence that, that Chuck Robbins presented? Yeah, no, that's definitely showing up in our customer conversations. And as Chuck also pointed out, it's also showing up with some of their largest channel partners uh, in those conversations as well. So, look, you just have a glut of equipment sitting there that needs to be deployed. And I don't disagree. It's going to take at least a couple of quarters. And it's more the concern for us is, does this start to stem into the SMB commercial base uh, as well, where that can be actually more macro sensitive as you think about uh, moving ahead? And it doesn't really uh, leave a whole lot of wiggle room still when you think about roughly 30 percent of their business is that commercial line. And we've already seen struggles on the carrier side that, that started popping up earlier this year. Cloud, it depends a bit on your exposure to which hyperscaler, let's say. Uh, but overall, like enterprise was essentially that last leg of the stool that was holding most of the space up. And it just now you're starting to see that down cycle of networking uh, really come, come about here. Um, and specifically, Ed, to your comment on wireless LAN, 
keep in mind, this has been, wireless LAN has been one of the strongest part of networking over the last year plus. And, and what we're seeing is, uh, it's actually twofold. One, you've gotten a lot of those access point upgrades already. Uh, and so Cisco Meraki, for example, has really benefited, been growing double digits for quite a while here. Uh, but secondly, when you look at why they needed to upgrade those uh, access points, it's because of exactly what I'm sitting on right now with Zoom or in other cases, Microsoft Teams, where that sucks up so much bandwidth at all these campuses and branches that you needed to upgrade those access points. And so now you've kind of gone through that and those applications themselves are trying to reduce down their bandwidth by over 20% in the latest version. So it, it, you just have a slowdown in that space in particular.